Hey everybody, in this video, I want to show you a fast, simple way to remove gradients and vignette from your photos. Now I realize there's already plenty of different ways you can do this, including automatic background extractor, dynamic background extraction, gradient correction, and even the third party scripts, like for example, Graxpert, that's a popular one that people like to use. I wanted to show you something new though, that I just learned about today. This is from SETI Astro, and this is called Automatic DBE. I've used this on about five or six images in the last hour, and I've been impressed just how well it works. So that's why I want to share with you guys in this tutorial. First, let's explain how to get this tool. This was created by SETI Astro. I'd recommend you check out his videos on his YouTube channel. He explains how to use each tool very well. And if you want to download the repository, you'll find that on his website. You're looking for this GitHub link under the Pix Insight scripts. Just copy and paste that into your repository list. Restart Pix Insight and it should install. Once you've got that installed, I'd recommend you follow along with me today using your own images. Again, you'll find this under Script, SETI Astro, and he's got a few different tools currently, but we're mainly interested in automatic DBE. The way this works is you can just stick with the default settings most of the time and run it. Just verify that it is your correct photo being selected. However, if you have a bright nebula or galaxy that you want to exclude, then click on the checkbox for user defined exclusion area. This will bring up a preview window. And then if you hold down the shift key, you can drag out a box over an area that you don't want to be targeted by the gradient correction. I'm not worried about it though, so I'm gonna turn that off. And another thing, if you're getting weird reverse vignette, or like your corners are too bright, try turning on rigidly fix corner points. That might solve that problem. But Let's just start off with the default settings and see what happens. In just about 30 seconds, it looks like it's finished. And with this background photo, we can hit Ctrl or Command A to get an idea of the gradient that it found. We don't really need this though. This is our new photo. And if we hit Ctrl or Command A, it looks a lot better. When I compare that with the original photo, you can see that the image on the left had a dark gradient towards the bottom and a bit of a bright area in the center. Once we ran automatic DBE though, the image is pretty flat from corner to corner. And the reason I'm a big fan of this is because if I right click on the photo name, then choose load history explorer, this actually shows you everything that the script did. It started off by renaming the photo. It ran a background utilization, automatic background extraction, and finally, dynamic background extraction. So what you can do is you can double click where the orange arrow is to undo something. So if I click up here, that undoes DBE. And when we do the before and after, you can see that it just made the thing a bit more even from corner to corner. If we undo automatic background extractor, that was mainly what fixed the gradient. And it looks like background neutralization didn't do all that much. If you notice things aren't quite perfect though, then you can double click on the name of the process, like let's say dynamic background extraction. When I double click on it, it brings up the tool and it shows us everything that it did, including the tolerance, the smoothing factor, the shadows relaxation, the correction method, etc. Even where it placed the points. Therefore, if it didn't do that great of a job, you can actually see where the points were placed and maybe delete them or move them around, change the correction method that way it works a bit better, adjust the tolerance, etc. And in this way, you can actually speed up the dynamic background extraction process because otherwise you'd have to come in here and do all this stuff from scratch. But at the very least, it automated most of it. And so what I can do is drag the triangle from DBE onto the background. That creates an instance. I'll rename it to, let's say, DBE version one. And now if I were to go back to the original photo, double click on DBE version one. It brings in all the points and the settings and I can run this on my own image. That way I can potentially get a better result. So again, I'd probably spend a few minutes placing these points and see what I can do. But anyway, I'm just trying to show you that you could always uh, very quickly try some different settings and see if you get a better result on your own. And if we were to compare this with the auto DBE image, I think what we would see is that they're pretty close, but this one's maybe a bit warmer. All right, that was our first test. Let's try this again on something a bit more difficult. If you're a fan of the channel, you might remember this photo of the Orion Nebula 
I was using it a lot for some tutorials a couple months ago. But let's see how AutoDBE works. This time I will define an exclusion area because I don't want it to accidentally pick up any points in the Orion Nebula. I'm holding down the shift key and dragging out where I don't want it to place any points. And I'm also aware that sometimes it will make the corners too bright with this image. So I'm gonna turn on rigidly fixed corner points. Everything else will leave to the default settings, although I could adjust them if I wanna get uh, more accurate results. But for now, we'll just stick with it. And then we'll see how this goes. All right, it's been about another 30 seconds. And if we auto stretch the photo, that looks about right. Here's a look at the new version. It's not bad. When I compare that to the original, note how flat it is and the dust is there, but it's, it could use some work. But the image on the right is far superior. All the dust stands out much better and that's a lot of fun to look at. It's still not perfect. I mean, there's some green here in the shadows. I could run SCNR to fix that or do some curves, whatever. And at any time I can right click on the file name, load history explorer, double click on whatever tool that I want to see what it did or even just undo it and get an idea. It looks like automatic background extractor over corrected in the corner. And for that reason, uh, dynamic background extraction tried to solve that problem. But if I find that maybe the colors aren't quite as good as I would like, I can double click on dynamic background extraction, change the correction method to division because this was taken into Bortle 2. Light pollution is not a concern. And I'm gonna turn off normalize perhaps. Let's see if that works better. Then I'll drag this onto the background, the triangle. That creates an instance, which we'll call DBE Orion. That way we don't get confused. And then I'll run this on the original photo with the understanding that we don't have the automatic background extractor applied, but still. All right, there's our new version that we've done ourselves. We still have that green color cast, so I'm probably better off just running SCNR and that would solve that problem. Yeah. All right, things are looking good. Let's try this again with another image. I've got the Pleiades. This is usually a difficult target because we have this faint dust throughout the photo. But I think what we'll find is that automatic DBE does a great job. The default setting should work fine. Let's see what happens. Here's a look at the before and after. The original photo was kind of flat and had this dark corner, but after running auto DBE, that problem is solved and the dust stands out much better. And if you're following along with your own data, you might want to try running gradient correction, Graxpert, etc., just to see how those perform on your own images. In the interest of time, I'm not going to be running through each thing just because this works so well. And that's all I've got for you in today's video. You've seen just how easy the automatic DBE script is. There are other scripts in here though. For more information on those, be sure to check out SETI Astro over on YouTube. His videos should explain how to use each one of those scripts. Finally, if you want to learn more about astrophotography in general, check out the 2024 edition of my Deep Space course. This was recently updated and it has over 80 new videos. We start off slow for beginners, but then once you've got the hang of pics in sight and Photoshop and actually taking your photos, we really ramp things up. And the whole goal of that course is to make your life easier because we all know how difficult astrophotography can be. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in another video.